Good morning, Corpus Christians. I am teacher in IC Tabrada of the Junior High School Science Department. Welcome to another time to discover a mystical truth at the heart of prayer. We glorify God today as we expect Him to move in our lives, to touch our hearts, and renew our spirits as we listen to His Word. So now, let us begin this first Friday service with an opening prayer to be led by Teacher Lovely, and let us continue to prepare our hearts as we sing songs of praises and worship to God to be led by Sir Mark Edwin. Lord, I believe. I wish to believe in Thee. Lord, let my faith be full and unreserved, and let it penetrate my thought by way of judging divine things and human things. Lord, let my faith be joyful and give peace and gladness to my spirit and dispose it for prayer with God and conversation with men so that the inner bliss of its fortunate possession may shine forth in sacred and secular conversation. Lord, let my faith be humble and not presume to be based on the experience of my thought and of my feeling, but let it surrender to the testimony of the Holy Spirit and not have any better guarantee than in docility to tradition and to the authority of the magisterium of thy holy church. Amen.
of the goodness of God. Oh, I will sing of the goodness of God. Oh, I will sing of the goodness of God. Sa 
Um, hello, uh, good day everyone. Um, let me just introduce myself. I am uh, John David Omancada. Um, I'm, uh, I play the keyboard in our church. Our church is called Celebration International Church. And uh, I'm also a faculty in a Department of Technology Communication Management. That's a department in the College of Information Technology and Computing in USTP or University of Science and Technology of Southern Philippines in uh, the CDO campus. So um, I'm just really grateful that um, uh, Ms. Unaisi has invited me to speak to you uh, today uh, in, your, uh, in your session. Um, I'm, I'm grateful that you know, she invited me uh, for one because you know um, as we as I try to refresh you with the Word of God you know actually I'm also being refreshed at one point I was thinking to to back out but then uh, God spoke to me uh, through his word which I will be sharing with you um, today so I'm saying uh, hello from my room here in Manila I'm actually right now in in Manila for a very important mission tomorrow um, uh, and I'm sharing to you this one uh, the, the fact that I'm in Manila because you know after two years of not being able to travel because of COVID-19 coming here today actually felt so weird and strange it felt like you know the airport is so is so weird and strange i had a bit of difficulty navigating through the airport because yeah again i haven't traveled for for a long time already and so speaking of travel um, i will be sharing with you um the lessons that we can all learn from uh from 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 abraham uh, we know that you know Abraham was called the father of faith, and Abraham was also in a journey, right? You know, Abraham was also in a journey. But before moving on, uh, let me just share to you uh, the title of what I will be sharing and talking to you uh, today. Um, it's a bit uh, uh, strange calling this talk "You Have to Lie." Yeah, you heard it right. You have to lie. You have to L I E. We have to lie now believe me we are going somewhere on this talk uh, the LIE actually are initials that stand for something and these are the things that we can learn from the life of Abraham as what I said earlier that Abraham was called the father of faith and he set an example for us right now in Genesis 12 uh, uh, verses uh, 2 to 3 um, if you have your Bibles with you, you can read it there that Abraham was called by God in a journey with him. And it was a journey leading to his destiny. And God made a promise to Abraham that God would make him into a great nation and he would make Abraham's name uh, great, right? So there was a promise that God gave to him and though Abraham didn't know where he's actually headed though Abraham actually didn't know what he would experience going to that to that destiny that God told him though Abraham didn't know how long it will take and how he will be able to go there but what Abraham did is that he stepped out in faith and he stepped out from his comfort zone and all that he had in him is faith and so the first point that i'd like to share with you today is to live by faith 
and not control. I'll say it again. To live by faith and not control. So, what is faith? What is faith? In Hebrews 11, we are able to read the definition of faith. In Hebrews 11, it says there that actually faith is the confident assurance that something that we want is going to happen and that we have that certainty that what we are hoping for will will happen now it's it's in its waiting for us and even if we haven't actually seen it but then you know we know that you know it, it will happen you know our christian faith is an assault to our worldly logic because our worldly logic tells us that we have to see it first before we believe. And yet our Christian faith, based on the Word of God, it says there that we believe even if we haven't seen it. And that's what Abraham did. You know, when God called him, he, he doesn't know actually where he's going, but then he stepped out in faith. He obeyed God even if he, haven't, he hasn't seen it yet. Now, when, when we travel... When we travel, you know, oftentimes we overpack, right? It, 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 uh, it cannot be avoided that when we travel, sometimes we, we bring too much, you know, stuff with us to where we are heading. And that's a manifestation that, you know, sometimes we, we overthink and we are trying to control circumstances, scenarios, and events that we think will most likely to happen when we travel, and yet, unfortunately, you know, we cannot control our life. That belief that we are able to control things that will happen, that's actually an illusion. And that's a losing proposition that actually just leads to anxiety and worry and insecurity. And you know what? When we are anxious and when we are insecure, it doesn't actually promote relationship building and it's just drives us unhealthy emotional driven decision making and it actually just makes others avoid us because we are anxious and we are insecure so we ask ourselves today what are we so anxious about what are we so insecure about you know that's worth reflecting today no and abraham is teaching us today that we have to live by faith and not be controlled by the things that makes us worry but have faith know that it will happen know that God will will do it in your life so I want us to pray through our anxiety and insecurity and you know make ourselves available to God trusting him more than anyone else you know we have to trust in him a word that I was reminded now is in Matthew 6 25 where it says that you don't need to worry don't worry about what you will wear what you will eat or what you will drink you know because if God has provided for the birds or flying in the air you know how much valuable are you compared to these birds you know so God is telling us today not to worry but to live our life in faith and by faith all right so that's letter L for you. And so the next uh, letter in the word lie is letter I. And letter I stands for immerse yourself in the journey. Yeah, so if L stands for live by faith, not in control, letter I stands for immerse yourself in the journey. You know, this point reminds me of the famous poet and es essayist named Ralph Waldo Emerson uh, when he said that life is a journey and it's not a destination. In Hebrews 11, 9 to 10, um, we, we read that Abraham has become like an immigrant or a pilgrim in his own promised land, you know, as though it belonged to someone else. Abraham was living from tents to tents together with Isaac and Jacob, who were also persuaded that they were co-heirs in the promise of God. And I like it. Now, in, chap in verse 10 of Hebrews 11, when, when the Word of God says that Abraham's eyes of faith 
were set on the city with unshakable foundations, uh, whose architect and whose builder is God himself. So, you know, God called Abraham to a journey. And what we can learn from Abraham is to subject ourselves, to immerse ourselves in the journey. You know, Abraham traveled for many, many years in his way to his inheritance. And I was thinking that, you know, God could have fulfilled the destiny of Abraham at any location in that journey. And yet, you know, God allowed him to travel for a long, long time. And we ask ourselves today, why is that? Why is the journey so, so important? You know, it was in the journey that Abraham was able to forge his relationship with God. It was in the journey when Abraham was, has developed his heart, his character, and his spirituality for him to be able to appreciate and to hold on to the inheritance that God has prepared for him. And so what is it for us? You know, God is teaching us today to also allow ourselves to immerse in the journey. Because you know what? It's in the journey that we're able to develop a healthy relationship with God. And you know what? Above everything else, I believe that God is after of our relationship with Him. You know, they say that, you know, it's not about religion, but actually it's all about relationship. You know, God is love. And love is not a religion, but love is a relationship. And that is what God wants from us to develop in us, to be dependent on God and not to be independent, but to depend in our relationship with Him. You know, I was thinking that, you know, you know, of all the places that God could have placed the first man and woman with Adam and Eve uh, on earth at that time, he placed him in a place called Eden, which actually means the dwelling place of the presence of God. Why is that? Because the original purpose of God is for man to, to live with him, in a relationship with him, in his presence. That's the original plan of God. And yet, you know, man has sinned, has drifted away from his presence. And yet, because God wants to have a relationship with us, he sent Jesus so that when we believe in him, we will have an everlasting and eternal life. And that can only be found when we put our faith in Jesus. So the point here is that we have to allow ourselves to to immerse ourselves, our lives in the journey because it's in, in the journey that, that we are able to create and to develop an, an intimate relationship with God. And an intimate relationship with God is all that really matters in our Christian life. And also this point you know, reminds me of the importance to really take the journey, if, no, no matter how long and tiring it is, but, you know, to allow ourselves in the process, in the journey, and do not take shortcuts. Because you know what? When we take shortcuts, it actually just leads us to setback. So allow yourselves to, 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 to go through the process because that's where we become, you know, stronger in our relationship with God. And, you know, when we have a relationship with God, it's, it's what that keeps us going while we wait for what God has in store for us. So right now, I'd like us to reflect on, our, on the status of our relationship with God. How is it? How's our relationship with God? How's our Bible reading? How's our prayer life going on? How's our worship with God? Is it still, you know, exciting? Is it still, are we still on fire with our relationship with God? I just really hope so. And as you listen to this, to this talk uh, today, I hope that we are motivated to keep our relationship with God going and, 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 and on fire. And the last letter in the word lie is letter E. And letter E stands for eyes on God's promises. So we have learned L, that stands for live by faith, not control. We have learned I, and that stands for immerse yourself in the journey. And letter E stands for eyes on God's promises. You know what? We are living in extraordinary times. 
you know, when COVID-19 happened, you know, things have become so, so uncertain. You know, we, we don't know what's going to happen next. Where, and our economy was affected. And the economy has become so, so fragile that, you know, people have become, uh, they're having a hard time, you know, living their lives during the time of, of COVID-19. And during the elections, the political climate has become so divided, you know, People, people were, were, were fighting against each other because they have differences in political uh, orientations. And, you know, our calendars have become so unpredictable. These are the challenges that, you know, some of us are facing, right? Uncertainties and all that. And these are the same challenges that Abraham uh, faced. But what is so remarkable about Abraham is that, you know, Abraham decided and chose to, cho cho uh, chose to focus focus and put his eyes uh, on the promises uh, of God. Um, in Romans 4, 20 to 21, it says there, and I will read it from, from, my, from my text here, that, you know, Abraham never stopped believing God's promise. For he was made strong in his faith to father a child. And because he was mighty in faith and convinced that God had all the power needed to fulfill his promises, Abraham glorified God. You know, Abraham did not fix his eyes on the circumstances around him, but he chose to fix his eyes on the promises of God because he knew that God is more than willing and able to keep his promises. You know, I remember Peter, you know, when he walked uh, on the water, but, you know, we, we, we know that, you know, Peter uh, sank. And, you know, why did he sink? Peter uh, sank because he took his eyes off from Jesus, but and you know he he chose to fix his eyes on the the noisy wind that was going around him, and that is why he sank. So the same thing, you know, for us today, our encouragement is just to keep on on focusing on the promises, on the many many promises of God to our lives. You know, probably some of us today are feeling tired, but you know what? God has a promise for you when you feel that, you know, you are tired. He says in Isaiah 40, 29, that he gives strength to the weary and increases the power of the weak. That is for you today. If you're feeling weak and tired, read Isaiah 40, 29, and that's a promise of God for you. Now, when you feel that you are drowning in problems and, you know, challenges in life, God is also a promise for you, and that can be found in Isaiah 43 too. It says there that when you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And when you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep over you. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burned. The flames will not set you ablaze. That's a wonderful promise of God. And when you feel that you, your prayers are not being answered, I'll tell you that in Mark eleven twenty four, God says here that whatever you ask for in prayer, believe that you have received it and it will be yours. And you know what? My forever uh, favorite verse and promise of God, which can be found in Jeremiah 29, 11. And I think some of you knows this that in jeremiah 29 11 the word of god says that for i know the plans i have for you that's the declaration of the lord it says here that the the the, the plans of the lord is for you to prosper and not to harm you and plans to give you hope and a good future such a wonderful promise of god and you know what the last time i checked the god that we serve is a god who doesn't lie Right, but you know everything that he says in his word, he will make it true and he will make it happen. You know, in, in during the time when God created the world, when he said it, when he said a word, you know, when he said that let there be light, and the word of God tells us that you know, and there was light. So the point here is that God's word is true, God's word is real, and it will he will make it happen in your life. So whatever you are experiencing right now, please know that God has a promise for your life and He will make it happen in due time. Amen? You know, probably some of us today uh, are tempted to listen to the voice of the enemy, which is saying, you know, to, to take control over your life and to take the shortcuts and to take off your eyes away from Jesus. But don't listen to that voice. But let's learn from the life of Abraham. And the life of Abraham is teaching us to, to live by faith, to immerse ourselves in the journey, and to um, fix our eyes 
on the promises of God. All right? So, you know, uh, that's a very um, short um, exhortation for us, for all of us today. And I hope that, you know, uh, even in that short period of time, we are, uh, we, we are inspired. We are inspired to live by faith, to, to uh, immerse ourselves in the journey, and to have our eyes fixed on the promises of God. Uh, in our lives. And so, before I end tonight, let me just pray for all of us, pray for you uh, today. Uh, so, let's just uh, put ourselves uh, conscious of the presence of God wherever you are right now, seated. Um, let's just uh, be aware uh, of the presence of God. You know, He said that, you know, He's Emmanuel and He's, and he's with us, right? So, uh, let's just pray for tonight. Lord, we thank you for, for your word. Thank you for, for, for your word, and we know that this is true. And uh, Lord, um, thank you for, for the life of Abraham, who has taught us valuable lessons, who has taught us uh, uh, lessons in faith that we ought to, to follow. Um, Lord, uh, you, you are happy when, when your people live uh, in faith and by faith. You're looking for this kind of people who are, who are faithful, who will not be in doubt, but who are certain that, you know, even if we don't see it yet, but, but we know that it will happen because we have you as our God that's able and is willing and is, and is powerful. So tonight, Lord, we, we just want to thank you for, for, for your promises. We know that it will come to pass and it will happen. We just want to enter into your gates with thanksgiving in our hearts. We are glad, we're joyful because, because we know that we can always depend and, and rely on you. Uh, for, for those of us here tonight, uh, to today, Father God, who are, who are facing difficulties and issues and challenges in our lives, thank you, Father God, for your presence will, will comfort us. Thank you, Father God, for, for you are with us and you will never leave us nor forsake us. And so I just really hope, Father God, and pray that you know, we will keep the faith and we will keep the fire burning uh, as, we, as we journey in our lives with you. And thank you, Father God, for always keeping us safe uh, for, for, the, for, the, for the school year that's ahead of us. Thank you for, for giving us the wisdom. Uh, you Holy Spirit is our, is our teacher. At times that you know, we, don't, you know, we don't understand what's happening, but Lord, you will, you will keep us sane. Your presence will keep us, will give us peace and strength. And so we just, uh, we just uh, give you back all the glory that you deserve. Father God, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Good day, everyone. I hope everyone were blessed by today's message. Let us keep in mind that with God's amazing love and grace, we can do all things. Let us continue being fruitful and faithful and seek the highest good. Commit to what is right and true. Strive to do our very best at all times, all for the glory of God. God bless us all.